Hi guys, Ariel here. I recently posted a design board, a Sally and Lynch board with different one stroke butterfly concepts, different colors and designs. And you guys uh, started to vote on them, which was lovely. And I will definitely do a few of those for you. But I got so many comments and questions about one stroke butterflies in general and that you guys are struggling with them. So this video is going to help those of you that are struggling with placement, color choice, and just just the strokes of a one stroke butterfly and where to place it on the face. So this is going to be a little bit of a slower paced video. If you know how to do a one stroke butterfly and you are not struggling with this, this is probably not the right video for you to watch. If you are struggling with it, hopefully I will give you some techniques and some ideas and a few guidelines to follow that will help you. So if you are one of those people that messaged me or commented and needs help, then this video is for you. So keep watching and I will show you some ideas and techniques that will help you. Okay, so breaking down one stroke butterflies, I use more often than not a three quarter angle brush to do butterflies. You can see this one's not dirty, it's just a little stained. And what I typically like to do is work from the top down. I do like to angle my butterflies in a bit of an arch going over the eye or the eyebrow. And then from there, I will do a multitude of different strokes. And I'm the kind of face painter, like a lot of us, that I like to switch stuff up. You know, if I have a long line of kids and I'm doing a ton of butterflies, I like to do them differently every time. I like to switch up the colors. I like to switch up the strokes and the designs. I'm constantly changing my butterflies. So there's a lot of different ways you can do this. But what I will typically do, and I'll load a brush and do this with paint too, but I wanna kind of break down the strokes for you guys. So what I typically do is start here. I like to make kind of an arch as a guide, and then I start to go down to the corner of the eye. Now, sometimes I'll do a stroke where I do kind of the tip of the butterfly, and it's a stroke where you're using that arch as a guide and you're pushing in and then flicking up and around to create kind of a tip. And then from there, sometimes I'll go in dramatically and do a loop, Sometimes I'll go back down to the eye and I'll go up to create kind of a really interesting wing effect and then I'll do the bottom. Um, I also sometimes will just do a series of quick loops and some loops down at the bottom as well, which makes a quick butterfly. There's no right or wrong to it. I think it's intimidating at first, which I'm wondering if that's why so many people are having trouble with it. So you do have to kind of practice and just go for it and try a few things and figure out the easiest way for you to get that paint onto that kid's face. Once you figure it out, it's a lot easier than sponging butterflies for a few reasons. One, sponging, it's more of a guesswork to loading a sponge and it's not as easily controlled as a brush or a one stroke um, paint and the brush together. So the sponge adds a few variables that can be difficult as well as when you're in an event and you're going to sponge on 100 butterflies, if it's a really, really busy event, you need 100 sponges because it's not good to reuse sponges on kids' faces, particularly when you're going over the eyes. Now, not all face painters feel that way. Some reuse sponges. It's their prerogative. I don't judge those people. However, I do use a different sponge on every kid. So if I'm going to sponge those, that's really hard. Where with the brush, I can quickly rinse out a brush and move on to the next kid. So it's a little bit easier for me and I don't have as many sponges to clean at the end too because cleaning that many sponges is hard. So I like to do that. I also like the fact that with the one stroke butterflies, I hardly never outline them. When I sponge on a butterfly, I always outline it. I always go to my then half inch brush and I do an outline to define the edge or I go to a very small round brush and I start to do the kind of flicks in with different um, edge and line work to define the butterfly. So it's an extra step. With the one stroke, 
I eliminate that step and I'll also show you how I eliminate it. So one thing that I like to do is pick a one stroke with a darker edge. Now, it doesn't mean I don't do one strokes with um, one stroke butterflies with lighter edges as well. I do, but I do it strategically. If I know I have time, I will do different combinations with lighter edges and then I'll do some edging or I will do an inside color that's a little darker so that it has a lot of contrast. But if I'm at a busy event, I like to pick a one stroke that has a really, really good gradient with a darker edge on one side. So this is Neon Nirvana, um, and I'm really, really liking this one lately. It's really bright and vibrant, and the edge, the kind of purpley color, it's kind of a almost to navy, but not quite. It's really a dark, dark plum provides a nice outline without me having to then go and outline the butterfly again. So I am going to get this nicely loaded up and I'm going to show you the one stroke butterfly that I did pretty much all weekend last weekend. Now when loading your brush and your one stroke, the other thing you want to make sure you're doing is loading the brush correctly and well. If you're only loading the brush to the belly of the brush, which is the middle of the brush, then it's not that well loaded. You want to load the entire tip of the brush all the way to the ferrule and make sure it's in the belly. So this means you're going to have to dip and reload, dip and reload, or spray your cake, whatever you do. Make sure you get a nice, nice loaded brush. That way you're gonna be able to keep painting. And even though mine looked loaded, I'm gonna do it again. So that's one trick right there. Make sure you have a lot of paint on your brush. So let me get up here so you can see a little bit better. I think I'll do this side. All right, so first thing that I am going to do, which this is the butterfly that I did pretty much all last weekend. It's very simple, easy, effective, works. So here we go. So I'm gonna start just at the top of the eyebrow. I'm not gonna start up really, really high because then I'm gonna have to do more strokes to get to the end of the eye. Instead, you wanna look at that kid's face and think, all right, my first stroke is gonna be here and then I can do one more stroke and be done with the top of the butterfly. So I'm gonna start just at the top of my eyebrow. I'm gonna do a loop going down in and then for this stroke, I'm going to lead towards my loop and then quickly shift back and curve in and I'm gonna drag the toe of my brush in. See how easy that is? Now from there, from the end of this loop, I am simply going to, and you do want to tell the kids, close close your eyes, just relax. If they do this squinty thing on you where they're like scared, tell them to just relax their eyes, um, pretend like they're sleeping, you know, get them to unsquint. A lot of times if they're having trouble doing it, the parent is right there and the parent will say to you, or help you and they will say oh honey you know don't squint your eyes really tight but if they're going like this then get them to relax tell them to take a deep breath um, you know get them to relax their eye which I have to do a lot so from here you're just going to do one sweep and stroke right over the eye now from there so you can see I got dry but on the opposite side of the brush, I'm not dry. So now I'm gonna to go to the other side of the brush and sweep it right over the eye. So there we go. Now at this point, you can take the heel of the brush and fill in a little bit if you want to. I'm gonna fill in right there because I want that yellow color to make sure it's a nice gradient. And that is the top of the butterfly. Incredibly simple. Now, even though I have some paint left on my brush, I'm going to reload because I could probably get one more stroke out of this, but I want to finish the entire butterfly with the last load of my brush. So I'm going to go ahead at this point. I dipped just the tip of my brush back into my 
one stroke and I'm going to reload it. Now from here, I like a bottom wing that's a little bit smaller and I like my butterflies pretty tight on the inside part of the eye anyways. So I am going to do a long line with the toe of that brush, almost as if you're going to do winged liner. You know, sometimes you start from that bottom corner of the eye, right, to do winged liner, only we're dropping it a little bit down, but you want to angle it up. And then I do that same stroke that I did at the top, at the bottom, leading towards the inside of my eye or the top bridge of my nose. So you can also think that all of these strokes we're doing are leading to the same spot. So if I put a dot right there, that's where all of my strokes essentially are going. So I do that line and then I make sure I'm in, in the camera. And of course my brush is getting wet as I, or getting dry. <laughs> as I'm sitting here talking. So I'm just gonna dip the tip of it, just that toe right back in and make sure I'm, I'm kind of wet enough. Okay, so now we're going to do that same stroke. I'm gonna lead in as if I'm gonna make another line right next to the line I just made, but instead I'm gonna dip out, curve, and then drag the toe in towards the dot I made. Now I'm just Got the one stroke in my hand, which I keep in my hand while I am painting the kid. I'm just going to go right back in, not grabbing any more water, but I still have moisture on this cake. So I'm going to load it again. And then from here, you can do a couple different things. You can pull this stroke down into more of a like curved butterfly shape, a little bit more realistic butterfly shape, actually. But I don't do that a lot of times. If I'm in a hurry, I just do another loop straight up. And there's my easiest butterfly. Now from here, you have some holes. If you have time or you want to make your butterfly more elaborate, grab a different split cake and put it in the center. If you are in a hurry, I would take the exact same split and for the top stroke, you can either replicate that original stroke you did with the curve and then fill in with the heel, or on all of these, just do a loop and then feel, fill in with the heel of the brush. Now, it's not an exact science. Sometimes you're gonna get a little bit drier of a consistency depending on how much you're painting, whether you're talking in between every stroke like I am, my brush is kind of drying out. Most of the time though, once you get everything really well worked, fill this in a little bit with the heel, um, you can do this in a couple loads of the brush, but I can tell that I'm getting a little dry. See how it's kind of pulled on that last stroke and that line right there is not perfectly even. So I'm going to dip just the tip of my brush back in and to fill in down here, I'm gonna do a loop and another loop. And then I'm gonna go to the heel of that brush and put that awesome orange color right in and I'm gonna fill in. So that is a very, very simple way to do a one stroke butterfly. I've gone over the eye, which I would do on a, on a kid. And at this point too, you can always clean this up. I like to take the flat part of the brush. You can see how I have that hole right there and just go like that and fill it in and kind of blend it if you need to. And it gives you a nicer, cleaner edge. So at this point, you have the shape of a butterfly. You of course can do this on both sides, which typically I'd be doing um, the outside shape I would do first and then I'd fill it in so that everything's kind of nice and even. When I am in a very, very big hurry, I take this exact same one stroke and I simply do a loop in the center of the forehead and then 
I'm at a weird angle here. And then fill in with the toe to create the body of the butterfly. And then I just do quick antenna like that. I will add glitter, spray it with glitter, do a few white dots, and that's it. Done. My really, really simple, easy festival butterfly. If I am in a really good zone and I'm doing these, I can probably do a butterfly in two minutes, you know, really, really fast. It's very effective. It's very bright. Parents are amazed by it. Kids are very happy with it. But it's not hard. It's not elaborate. Um, you can use this as the basis of a butterfly and then add, you know, different strokes going down and flowers and more dots and even pull in more one strokes to create more of a layered, defined look if you have time. But that's a really simple way. So hopefully that helped. Now I'm going to show you a few different techniques on this side of my face. Okay, so you can also use a one inch angled brush. Just keep in mind, this is a lot larger. So if you're working on a really small kid, it's gonna take up a lot of real estate really quickly on the face, which can be good in some cases. When you're trying to be fast and get a lot of paint on a kid's face, quickly, you know, the larger the brush, the better the application is going to be. So I went ahead and loaded this. This is one of um, Nat's collection, Blue Wren, which is very, very pretty. It also has a nice dark edge on one side, which again, I prefer. So I'm pretty well loaded. It is harder to get cakes with metallic loaded really, really well. So I'm pretty much at the belly of my brush. I'm going to try to do one more dip and see if I can get it a little bit more well loaded. But you do want to be careful with cakes with metallic because they can get um, kind of mushed together. So sometimes you can't get it quite as well loaded. At least that's what I find. Maybe I'm doing it wrong. I don't know. Okay, so here we go. So on this side, I'm going to do the same basic principle, but I'm going to do more of kind of a feathered, you know, more strokes essentially. So I do like to lead always down because it gives me a nice guide. So I do that with my brush and then I'm just going to do those same strokes and and kind of uh, loops in but I'm going to do more of them so you can see I did kind of the peak at the top and now I'm just going to do smaller loops and I'm going to drag that toe in every time I do it right most kids don't have like bushy eyebrows like I do so then you won't get stuck on them um, you can see again, too, I'm dragging that toe back to where if I want to pretend I have a dot right here to my focal point every single time. Now, again, with one strokes in general or anything with a metallic, I can tell I'm starting to get dry and my colors are starting to blend together because I'm dragging them on top of each other. So I'm just going to barely dip back into my water and back into my one stroke to keep it all very clean and very neat. All right, so I'm going to do another loop and I'm gonna drag it in. See how that makes such a big difference, how dramatic it is after reloading than that last stroke that I did here. Okay, so you could keep going down here, but you can see my strokes are gonna to start to dip downward and I personally don't like that. Some people do it totally fine and you can continue to go down. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. Let's get that out of there. Um, if you do continue to loop down, try to loop inwards towards the corner of your eye. So angle it like this and move in towards the corner of your eye. I personally don't like it. If you continued to loop out, 
and your butterfly ends up going out that way, I just aesthetically try not to do that. Um, so I would continue to loop in this way. What I like to do instead though, is I like to create kind of a, a different look for the butterfly. So I like to put my brush with the dark toe down in the corner and then sweep over the eye, create kind of an eyeshadow, and then do a stroke upwards. And it just gives it a different look and I think it lifts the eye rather than drags it down. So now I'm gonna fill in with that gold. And I've got the top of a butterfly. So you can see if your bristles start to separate, then your brush is dry and you need to reload. So I'm going to do that and reload my one stroke. I'm going to be a butterfly. Okay. So I am nicely reloaded. My bristles are back together. I've got nice, wet, shiny paint on my brush. And you can go right back up and finish the top or start on the bottom, whatever you want to do. I am just going to finish the top here with some loops. So I'm going to go right in and just loop it around. And I'm going to fill in with that pretty gold right there. There we go. So there's the top of our butterfly. Now for the bottom on this one, I'm going to do something a little different than I did on this side. So I'm going to start it at the corner of my eye. I'm going to go down and loop down and back up to create one solid shape for the bottom wing. So again, I like kind of smaller, tighter bottoms to the butterfly. But if you're gonna go down, make sure you kind of have a nice consistent shape. Try not to go past the mouth or even the nose, preferably, um, because then I think it kind of makes it too heavy and you don't have as elegant or clean of a look as when you kind of keep it nice and tight to the eyes. It just looks a little bit more elegant and put together to me. So, all right, so this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna start right under the eye, right where that last stroke kind of left off. And we're gonna go down and then we're gonna push out into a teardrop and then pull it back up and around. And then we're going to fill in with the heel of the brush and with that gold. Okay, so you can see too, if I take the brush, I didn't go past my nose. So even though it's a little bit larger than the bottom on this side, I still have a pretty tight, concise design. If I would have taken that down really far, it would not have looked as consistent with my top wing. Okay, so you can see that it's really simple, controlled strokes to create bright, effective butterflies. I think one of the things that can make this really easy is picking the right one stroke. And there is no right or wrong either, so really experiment and see what works for you. As far as the inside of the you know butterfly goes for the body, you can do so many different things. Do a quick loop, um, do a series of dots, do a gem cluster here looks lovely. I personally love doing double dipped flowers. So doing a larger double dipped flower and then some cascading up or a rose. I like doing the double dipped flowers because it adds a lot of value quickly and it makes this even more impressive. Um, really like doing the double dipped flowers as well because once I do them here, then I can kind of plop one or two in the design and it quickly adds a layer and an element that even heightens the look of the butterflies. So do that. Um, I will show you really quickly how I finish 
this one at an event because it's so easy. So what I typically would do is, um, while it's wet, once I finish the strokes of the one stroke, I'm going to spray some gold or white iridescent or silver glitter. And then I quickly plop on a few dots. And that's it. That's the butterfly. So of course I would do this on both sides of the face and it is fast and effective. Um, this one's also really fast and effective. I do like doing this for teenagers and adults because it kind of gives that like lifted eyeliner look. So I think it's just kind of sophisticated and fun. Um, but you can also see that with the darker colors I chose, I don't need to line this. If I had time to line it and make it even more elaborate and do some swirls and curls, great, why not? But the point is to not have to. So when you pick the right one strokes, it just makes it a little bit easier Okay guys, so those are some easy techniques that I use for one stroke butterflies. I hope this helped. If you are one of those people that asked me for help and had questions, please let me know if this helped you guys. I will try to share this video on um, Facebook and Instagram as well so that you guys see it. But please share it in different forums if you know people are struggling with butterflies because it's really easy once you get the hang of it. I think it's just tricky when you don't quite know where to start. So please like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. Follow me on Instagram and Facebook as well. I post a lot of content there and pictures from events that I do so you can see a lot of my, my work out in the field uh, rather than just videos on YouTube. So thanks so much for watching guys and I will see you in my next videos where I do some of the choices that you guys picked for butterfly design. So thanks so much for watching and I will see you next time.